Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. Today, we're taking a look at an Apple TV remote. That's right. So I got the Apple TV uh, not too long ago, and I've been uh, using it quite a bit, and I have dropped it quite a few times, and I have seen on the internets that if you drop it, it is actually made out of glass, so there is a chance that it can shatter and break, just like this one, like this photo here. Uh, so I definitely don't want to do that. So I think what we can do is uh, we can design a quick case that we can print in uh, Ninja Flex or even PLA. So that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to make a enclosure and 3D print it in Ninja Flex material. And I was doing some searching. There's actually already some cases for the uh, for the Apple TV remote. So there's one here for ten dollars, which looks kind of cool. And there's also one that goes up to $20. This is from Griffin. It's a really nice brand, really good company. Uh, but I think we can make this in like, I don't know, $2 worth of material. So that's one of the awesome things about 3D printing and knowing CAD and being able to design stuff is to solve a problem. So I haven't broken this yet, but I think it's it's better to do it before it, it happens. So that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing we need to do is get, of course, the dimension. So, of course, we can measure it out with calipers, which is nice. But I actually did some searching, and I found that the documentation, there are some technical drawings, at least some really simple ones. So here's here's the Apple TV and Apple TV remote. So at least we know the height, the width, and the thickness of it. Uh, but we don't know uh, the actual sensors here, so the IR sensor, the microphone, and the charging port. So we need to make a couple measurements using our calipers, of course. So we got the calipers here. So we'll measure those out and try to make a really quick one. So I think it'll be a good sort of uh, experiment test project, quick project for the layer by layer. So let's get going. I got Fusion open here, and I'm going to start off with the rectangle tool. So let's go ahead and draw out the main part. So I'm just going to put in some Bojank measurements and then get the actual one. So it's going to be 38 by 124. So it's 38. Enter. By 120. I don't remember. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, 124 by 38. Okay, cool. That's really skinny looking. So, um, yeah. I, I like the design of the, the, the Apple TV remote. One thing we don't know is the actual uh, fillet radius here. So I just did a quick measurement. And I think it's like 10 millimeters, so I'm just going to say it's 10 millimeters. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, so that's that's going to be the base of it. So now what we need to do is to make those actual fillets. So there's actually a fillet tool in here, so it's under Sketch Fillet. And then we just click on the corners to add them. So there's 10 already added for me. I wish there was a, a hot command for the fillet, because I have to manually click on it like that. 10. I think if you right click, you can bring up the magic menu thing and just repeat fill it. That makes it a little bit easier. So I can just right click, repeat fill it, and then click on it. 10 again. And then we can just change that um, if, if, it, if it doesn't turn out too good. Um, that looks a little bit excessive now that I'm looking at it. I'm actually going to change it to like 8. I think it's 8. Yeah. Just visually, you can kind of make a guesstimate. If anyone knows like a proper way to measure it, let me know because um, I'm just kind of, I can use the calipers and it kind of looks like it, but you know, fillets are kind of hard for me to measure. So that looks a little bit more like it would be it. So we got our, our base shape and our base measurement. Um, for whatever reason, the uh, the sketch dimensions kind of disappeared. Um, I guess when you added a, a, a fillet through the sketch, it kind of disappears. Mm, it's kind of weird. But uh, I don't think we'll be editing that. So. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to make a um, I need to make an offset. So um, the offset is going to be on the inside first. So this is going to be uh, how how thick or how much of a because I'm going to have the whole backing revealed. So I don't want to have to make a uh, like a cover, a complete cover, and then have to like cut out the little microphone here. So I'm just going to put three. And on the outside is going to be another uh, offset is going to be on the outside. For the actual thickness of the of the uh, of the enclosure, so I want it to be like two millimeters, so it has a little bit of um, kind of grippy padding, so that that'll be fine. So two millimeters, so I'll hit OK, and now we have our main sketch. So let's take a look at the tech drawing again, just to see. So it's going to be six point three millimeters thick. So that's how thick it is, six point three. So I'll do my first extrude then. 
and I'll in, and I'm just going to extrude out those two offsets. So this one and this one. I'll put 6.3. So now I'll hit enter, and now we have the bumper, <laughs> kind of. So the next thing we need to do is to make an opening for the actual, uh, so that the phone can fit in, or the phone, the, the TV remote can fit in. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, another extrude here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, a two-sided direction, because we need to make uh, a couple of different things here. So, um, so the thickness is, um, yeah, let's go back to our, our main extrude, and we're going to add a little bit to it. So I want to have uh, one millimeter of thickness on the top and bottom of the of the bumper, so I'm just going to add two millimeters added to that 6.3. So now I have that. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create another extrude on the on this inner part here. So I'll change the, um, the direction from one side to two-sided because we're going to need uh, two you're going to need it to go two different ways. So I'm going to pull in this side up here and I'm going to leave one millimeter right there and then one millimeter right here. So it's going to be like that. So this should equal out to uh, 6.3. So I need to actually put, um, yeah, so it's going to be 7.3 on the up and then um, one on the down. So now we're actually carving out the area um, for the Apple TV remote to, to go into. So now you can see that we have um, a little bit of, a lot of overhang actually right here. So we've created sort of a little cavity for our, our bumper. And although the bottom will work out well, we can totally print that bottom, it's gonna be really hard to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just sketch on top of this so I can, um, use the project sketch which is under sketch and then I'll hit uh, project here project and you can just hit P on your keyboard and then just click on that top surface so with that projected I'm actually going to create an offset of this inner part here so I'm going to come out to like I think three now let's try like two so now I can use this sketch to cut away from the top. So I hit E on my keyboard, and then I can use the extents to be two, so it's dynamic to this surface here. And now I'll cut that away. So now I have like a little bit of lip. I don't want too much lip. And then what I can do here is um, create a chamfer. So I can come here and click chamfer, and then click on this part here and then add like one, let me do 0.9. Yeah, so it's actually one millimeter distance. Uh, so there's our chamfer, and there's our bumper. <laughs> one thing I'll do is, I'll, of course, I'll add a, a fillet to this edge here, probably about one millimeter, like that, because I want it to be a little bit, um, of course, nice and, and soft, not, not sharp, smooth. And then I'll add one at the bottom as well, at one. So actually, I can just double click on this part, and then and then hold down uh, Command or Control on PC, uh, and then click on this part so we can do the operation with one uh, with one operation. <laughs> so there we go. It is looking so simple and clean. I'm liking it. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to create the um, the the opening for the sensor and the port. So if we measure it out, it's actually, it equates out to about the same thing. So I'm going to leave a little bit of room here. So I'm going to try to round it off. So it says 10.56. So I'm thinking about just 10.5. And if I look at this, like the both parts, the sensor and the porthole, they're actually the same. So 10.5 is going to work for the, for the whole thing. So I'm just going to cut right through it. And I'll show you guys how I'm going to do it here. So I'm just going to... Uh, Click on the rectangle tool and then click on this uh, edge here, the surface. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the line tool and then find my midpoint. So I'm going to roll over uh, one of the edges until I, until I get that little um, uh, that triangle that lets me know that's in the center. So I'll just make a line here and connect from here to here. 
and then I'll hit escape key to get out of the line tool and then I'll click on that line and make it a construction line so it's a reference point instead of actually intersecting the whole thing. So now that I have my midpoint it also looks like it's in the center the, the center vertically so I'll do the same thing but uh, vertically instead of horizontally so again come here find the center and then just connect like that and then escape click on it and then make it a construction line so now I have my intersecting point here so the next thing I'm going to do is click on the rectangle and then change it from change the feature type from two point to center rectangle so that I can create it from the center point so I'll click on the center point like that and I'll drag it out it was 10.5 and then the width didn't check out the width yet the width is going to be 3.7 let's do 3.7 so 3.7 like that hit enter okay and the next thing I'll do is I'll create a chamfer here or a fillet rather so back to my fillet one okay so now that my fillets are created I can exit the sketch by hitting stop sketch and then I will actually cut through both of these things by using the extent. So I'll hit D on my keyboard, click on that, come back over here, and then change the extents from distance to two, and then click on that. And then it just makes a giant cut like that. So now we have our portholes, and it's, kind of, it's very symmetrical. So you can actually put it on both ways, and I don't think it'll mess with it. Um, so yeah, I think that's it guys, <laughs> that's, that's pretty simple and um, that's the whole point, right, is to make a simple enclosure that, that solves a pretty big problem, like if I had to replace the whole remote, it, it would probably be, I don't know, like 50 bucks or so, I haven't even looked how much it costs to maybe replace this thing, but don't want to do that, so um, let's go ahead and export this out and then open it inside of um, uh, our slicer. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out here. I'm going to make a new project folder. Save. And we, we did it in like a couple operations. So one, two, three. We only made nine operations to do this thing. So that's really nice. It should be easy anyway. So the cool thing is that if we, we do have to modify like the, 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 uh, the tolerances, we can quickly do so by just adjusting uh, the sketch dimensions. So that's, that's always an awesome thing. And that's why I really recommend uh, Fusion 360. So I'm going to export it out now as an STL and put it in the proper place. Now Fusion 360 has like this thing where you can shoot it directly into that but then it doesn't save the STL uh, locally so it just has it like in the cache which I don't like too much but you can do that if you like. So there it is and what I'll do is I'll rotate it. This is Simplify 3D by the way and I'll rotate it on the Z. Is it the Z? Yeah the Z which is weird but yeah. Um, 90? Yeah, 90. And there we go. Next things I'll do is I'll, I have a um, NinjaFlex already set up. So I'm going to make this NinjaFlex on the Flash Forge. So I'm going to print it on NinjaFlex. And I'll double check all my settings here. So I have a point form nozzle, extrusion multiplier. One thing I found out uh, is to have a little bit more of the extrusion multiplier uh, when you're extruding uh, NinjaFlex and uh, retraction is always off for me because I, I found retraction uh, tends to not work so well so um, so there's that and the infill I'll leave it at 20 the temperature I found that 230 is a, is a, is a little bit hotter than normal PLA but that's because it, it works a little bit it's, it flows a little bit better uh, at 230 and of course the speeds are, are really slow so it's like I'm actually going to drop this down to 30 and this down to uh, 45. So there's uh, some rule of thumb tips there for printing with NinjaFlex. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and prepare the print and select the right process, NinjaFlex. And you can see here it is about 60 cents in, in material. 60 cents. That's crazy. So you can see here that there's a little problem here. It actually is printing this weird thing. I've noticed that problem in Simplify 3D. I, I need to tell them to correct that. But uh, the way I found to fix that is to just bump up the uh, the layer height to about like 0.1, so 2.1. And then if I prepare it again, you'll see that that 
is alleviated. I'm not sure why that bug is there, but it is definitely a bug. If you guys have that same bug in Simplify 3D, uh, let me know and I will contact their support team and see what's up because um, this is this is pricey software and it's supposed to be like really really good, which it is. But uh, you know, some some things can slip through. So it's looking pretty good. Um, Wow, I like that that tool path there. It's like super clean. So that's looking really good. And hopefully, um, since it's exact, it won't be loose. It'll be nice and tight. And if it's not tight, I want it to be kind of tight because it is. It needs to be like hugging onto it. Then I'll just adjust the offset to like negative 0.2 or so. But that's going to be it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and print this out, and then we'll come back and see uh, how it fares. All right, so we're back and we 3D printed it. Here it is. It came out actually really nice. So here it is, like I was saying, <laughs> it came out pretty good. Um, there's just a couple of things that I want to do. Only two little things. So it, although it does fit really nice, um, it's a little bit loose. I can find myself pulling on it and being able to make it come off. And the ports, uh, they're although they're lined up okay, I, I want to be perfectionist about it, right? So I'm going to move them down vertically about by half of a millimeter. Um, this is actually the first time I've ever tried plugging in uh, the port. So it's a little bit, um, it's a little, it had to bulge out a little bit, but because it's NinjaFlex, um, it can do that. But I want to um, just move it down a little bit, and it, it still fits in there, so that's nice. Um, so let me take that out. And... Um, I want to make it tighter, so it's a really easy, simple thing to do. Is just the off to make another offset, but here it is, printed in NinjaFlex using those settings uh, worked out really well. Um, uh, I'm just going to add more infill. So if, instead of 20, I'm going to add like 50% infill. But it came out really well. It did come out with a little bit of string, so I had to clean it up. But that's because the retraction was turned off, and it, it doesn't usually do good with retraction anyway. So that's why I have it turned off. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. The last thing I want to do is make a little hole here. Are two little holes on the corner so that I can add like a lanyard. So like when you're playing, um, you can have it like hang off of you. Uh, so that that might be a little bit handy. But those are some quick edits that we're gonna do. Again, it came out pretty good, but I just want to make that extra um, sort of tolerance fit to it. So let's go ahead and do that. All we have to do is come into the main sketch. Let me take a look at these sketches. So I have the top sketch, and then okay, so that's the cut sketch. So let's go into the main sketch here. And what I'll do is I'll make an offset here to about 0.2 millimeters. So I'll just click on the offset button and then click here, bring it down, and then put 0.2, and then hit enter. And now I can stop the sketch. And then what I'll do is I'll extrude. So I'll hit E on my keyboard, and then click on that one little piece here. And then I'll just bring it up. So what it's going to do is, you see it's cutting away. We'll change the, uh, the operation from cut to join. That way it adds that extra bit there. And then we'll bring it up, up more, up until it touches that uh, chamfer part. So now it's flush with that and then I can hit OK. So now we have uh, a quickly updated thing and uh, to update this, I think all I have to do is just update one since it was one uh, cut. Moving it might be a little bit challenging so it will not be challenging, but it's I'm not too sure exactly how to do it, like because it's it's uh it's been made uh, using these reference points. I don't think I could just move it. Yeah, so maybe I can do just do a sketch dimension and go from here to here. So maybe put by half a mil, right? So. Add 0.5. Okay, that was perfect. So I just did a sketch dimension. I didn't even know if it was going to work or not, and it did. So I hit OK, and now it's been moved down by half a mil. Um, and now uh, the the cuts aren't exact. I'm not sure what happened there. So let's go ahead and, and redo the extrude, I guess. No, not that one. Uh, this one here. So, huh, that's weird. I guess because it added to it, yeah. So maybe we can just grab this piece and then like make it go forward. Yeah, so that's that's something you can do, is you can actually move features. So all I do is I just drag that over so that it didn't add that. Because when I, when I made that, um, that extrude, it actually covered it. So it retained that. So all I had to do is just move that. So that was really quick and easy. 
Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is just add a hole. And to do that, we can do that a couple of different ways. But I think I'm going to do it um, really easy, a really, really easy way. So I'm going to use actually not a sketch, but a primitive. So I'm going to use a torus to do this. I hit the wrong uh, place. So I'm going to go to create and then hit torus because it'll be able to create my... Um, my my holes really quick so I'm just gonna like make it around here this corner and maybe put like a seven thing and then it should be I'm gonna make it a, a new body so that I can move it around because right now it's like glued to the to the bottom surface here and it looks like the diameter is gonna be two millimeters which I think is fine um, two millimeters of a hole is, is about right so that looks good. I'll just hit enter. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut away from this. So we're going to subtract it from that. So I need to move it now. Let's click on the move tool and then click on the body. And then we'll just move it up. Like that. Yeah, yeah that, looks, that looks fine. And now we need to uh, again move it so that it's. Um, Something like that. Yeah. I think that'll work. So I can visually see that um, it's just going to cut in between those two parts there. Or it's going to have those two holes there. So now what we can do is just uh, subtract the two pieces together. So I go to combine, and then I'll select our target, and then our tool, which is this guy here. And then um, we don't want to keep the tool, we want it to disappear. And instead of join, we'll hit cut. And I'll hit OK. And it should make a hole. So there's our two holes. Really, really easy way to do it. I could have done like sketches and stuff, but I think it's a lot easier to just do it with a primitive. So that's fine. And I think that's all we need to do. Now we can clearly know which side is going to be the bottom because that that side's going to be the bottom there. So that's about it. Um, I'll 3D print this out, and uh, of course I'm going to do a little bit of updates to the um, to the infill. I'm going to make it 50% infill, but I think that's all I'm going to do. Oh, and one other thing, I'm going to do an overlap thing, which is a specific uh, thing about version 2. So let's bring it into uh, 123D real quick and show you um, what I'm talking about. Let's get rid of this one. Let's do that shape again. Uh, do that quick rotation on the Z. And hit OK. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So uh, the update I want to do is, of course, the infill is going to be 50% now. And um, we're going to change the, do, 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 the infill overlap. It was 35, but I want it to go a little bit further, so I doubled that to, thir uh, to 65. So we're going to see how well that comes out. And uh, we'll 3D print this, and we'll take a look at uh, the differences between the two. Okay, so we're back and it is now 3D printed and this thing came out perfect. The fitting of it, the tolerances really worked out really well so it's nice and snug, it's nice and tight and um, it printed in just about an hour. Uh, there was a little bit of cleanup of course with most NinjaFlex prints you gotta clean it up a little bit but I definitely recommend uh, using like uh, some flush snips to cut them off as opposed to like peeling it off because if you rip it up, if you peel it off it's kind of like how you, how you have loose threads on your clothes. If you keep yanking on it, it's going to unthread it. So that's one little tip. Uh, also, I'm really surprised how well the, uh, the little cut, little circles for the lanyard came out and I was able to thread the lanyard uh, pretty easily and it's like a Wii controller now. So that's going to be awesome. Like playing the game, if I, it flies out of my hand, It'll be it'll be there, and it doesn't seem to um, to like come off of it, so that's really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be uploading this to Thingiverse, um, so I'll have the link down in the description below. Um, it did take a little bit to, to model it, like it took 10 minutes at first, and then we had to iterate it and update it. But I mean that's how it is anyway. Um, I did have a feeling that I didn't, that I was gonna have to update it, um, but it's cool. We sh we showed you how easy it is to update, uh, how to make like an offset to make the thing. Um, and that's that's really pretty much it, I think. Um, oh yeah, also the portholes came out perfectly, right? So half a millimeter, moving it half a millimeter worked out really well. Uh, so plugging it in there uh, worked really well. 
Also, um, that that one uh, setting in in uh, in Simplify 3D, the over the over uh, what is it called? The over <laughs> the infill overlap. Raising that to 65% really helped a lot because if you look at this one, um, it it was actually um, there's actually a spot here if you can see that. Um, where it didn't really adhere too well, the, the layers didn't adhere too well, and you can see how it splits like that. So at, so updating that part, upping it to 65%, uh, makes it so that it's it really is um, nicely uh, adhered well, so all the layers are nice and, and, and merged. So that's, that's pretty much it. It's a really simple enclosure. Um, again, it only took a little bit to, to model it, but um, if I drop this now, I will have no problems fearing that if it broke or not, because I know it's 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 uh it's not gonna break also um it's got a little bit of grip to it too so it, it feels a lot better on your hands so it's not gonna slip out so that's another benefit of using ninja flex material so um that's pretty much it guys thank you guys so much for watching i hope you learned something um and if you have any questions just go ahead and drop them in the comments and i'll go ahead and answer those live on our live show that's on every thursday so i'll see you guys next time but until then remember to keep on a cat in yeah bye guys Thank you.